Uh, today, I'll be focusing on something that is very simple and yet very useful from a Citrix monitoring perspective. I will show you how synthetic monitoring is the easiest form of performance monitoring you can employ and how it can help you move from being reactive to being proactive. Before we begin, a very quick introduction to EG Innovations. We're a software company delivering applications and infrastructure performance monitoring solutions to the global market. Citrix and virtual desktop technologies have been a key focus for us. We started working with Citrix way back in 2003, mainly because we saw a number of monitoring tools in the market, but very few that were focused on the unique challenges that Citrix administrators faced. Our solutions are purpose-built for Citrix, incorporate expertise from working with um, hundreds of Citrix deployments around the world, and are Citrix Ready certified. We are a global technology partner for Citrix, and Citrix themselves have used our tools to monitor their infrastructure that they set up to support their keynotes and labs at Citrix Summit, Summit and Synergy each year. Let us now turn our focus to performance monitoring for Citrix. 10 to 15 years ago, the focus of Citrix performance management was on CPU, memory, and disk resources. In fact, at that time, the built-in tool in the Citrix stack was Citrix Resource Manager. That has now changed. Your main focus is not just looking at CPU memory and disk utilization levels. That's not how you're measured. What matters is the experience that your users are getting. Another trend that's happened over the years has been the rapidly changing technology landscape. Virtualization and cloud computing technologies are being deployed widely, and even the Citrix protocols and peers involved have also changed over the years. What's more, with the advent of cloud services, you may not even have access to the servers that are supporting your Citrix services. Take the case of Citrix Cloud, for example. It is therefore imperative that you should be able to monitor the user experience and, where possible, take action when issues are detected. Performance monitoring is a 24 by 7 activity. You have to be able to determine if there are issues, even if nobody is accessing your Citrix site. For instance, there could be a logon issue at 2 a.m. in the morning, and if you can detect it and fix it, users may not even see the problem when they log in at 8 a.m. So relying on user complaints to take action is a very slow and reactive process and will not help your credibility. In a past survey that we've conducted of Citrix uh, professionals, we had seen that over 84% of Citrix admins want to move from being reactive to being proactive. The question is how to become proactive and how to do this without spending a lot of time and money. There are many monitoring tools that are built into the Citrix stack. There's Citrix Director for Session Monitoring, Citrix ADM or Netscaler Mass for analyzing flows, Citrix Analytics for analyzing usage patterns and trends, and smart tools to compare the configurations of your systems with best practices. Of these, Citrix Director is the one that provides the most insight into user experience. Based on real users who are logging into your Citrix site, Director can help you monitor logon times, give you some breakdowns of logon, logon times to help you understand where slowness is coming from. You can also track the performance for each users like um, bandwidth and latency and so on. Director also provides you with other capabilities like shadowing a user session, controlling the session for troubleshooting and so on. And while monitoring actual user sessions is important, there may be times where nobody is connected to your Citrix site, and you still need to know if the site is up or not, and whether it's responsive or not. You may also have situations where you've tweaked your group policies, and you want to see instantly what effect this has on user logouts. Or you may be considering a move to Citrix Cloud, and you may want to have a benchmark of performance in your local deployment, and compare that with the performance after you move to the cloud. To support these kind of requirements, Citrix introduced app probing as a feature in virtual apps and desktops 7.18. With app probing, you deploy a lightweight agent on a VM. It's called a probe agent. And then you have to connect it to your storefront. And 
you can then leave it running and it will once a day check if it can access your application and launch it. There are many limitations with this capability. It's, this feature is only available as part of CIPIC's premium licensing. In addition, uh, this feature works only through storefront. So if you want to measure the performance of your external users who connect through Netscaler, app probing won't work. This capability will not work for Zen desktop. So it's mainly only for your virtual apps, not your virtual desktops. Also, scheduling of this capability is cumbersome. If you want, by default, the probe can be scheduled to run once a day. If you want your probing to be more frequent, say 15 minutes, you need to create one probe for each 15 minute interval. That's why I said configuration can be difficult and cumbersome. So what we just discussed are the limitations that the synthetic monitoring capabilities that are included in the EG Innovations flagship product, EG Enterprise, addresses. Our synthetic monitoring capability functions as a software robot, emulates a user from one or many remote locations. It then sim stimulate, simulates the exact steps that a user performs when accessing a CIPRIC site, and the monitoring can be done 24 by 7, so even if there are no active sessions to your site, you still know if your site is available and responding. The monitoring is totally agentless, so you don't have to deploy any software on your Zen app servers or your Zen desktop VMs. There are basically two types of solutions that we provide for synthetic monitoring. The first is just focused on Citrix logons, while the second is focused on simulating a full session. We'll cover both with quick demonstrations next. The logon simulator is a software robot that is programmed to simulate Citrix logons. There are basically three main steps that the logon simulator performs. It opens the browser, automatically enters the Netscaler and Storefront URL, waits for the page to load, and then enters your username and password and logs in. Once the login succeeds, it checks to make sure that the application or desktop of interest can be enumerated, and then it clicks on the application or desktop, launches it, makes sure that the launch succeeds, and finally it logs off. This simulator can be scheduled to run at any frequency, and it can be run from one or multiple locations. And you can even configure the same simulator to check multiple Citrix sites. Now let's uh, see how the logon simulator works in reality. You're now seeing the results of logon simulation on the EG Enterprise web dashboard. In this case, we're simulating five applications and one desktop. You can see the URL that the simulator is connecting to, which user it's connecting as, and the results of the simulation are seen in the right-hand side columns. Uh, the first column tells us if the Netscaler access worked, whether you were able to connect and log on to Netscaler, how long did that take? Then you can check if the desktop is enumerated, and when the user clicks on the desktop, does it actually launch, and how long does the launch take? You can set threshold limits for each of these metrics and be alerted if any of these metrics goes out of whack. If you want to see more details of the simulation, you can click on the magnifying glass on the right-hand side, this is our detailed diagnosis capability. In this case, you can see that the total simulation took 119 seconds, and you see granular details of where time was being spent. You can see how long it took to open the browser and type the URL specified, how long to connect to Netscaler, how long for the authentication to succeed, how much time to enumerate your app or desktop, how much time to establish your session, and how long for the desktop to finally launch. Looking at the breakdowns, you can get an idea of where the slowness is arising from. For instance, if authentication was slow, check your Active Directory server or your connection to Active Directory. If your session establishment was slow, you would check your virtual app server. If your desktop launch is slow, it potentially means there could be an issue with your profile loading, GPOs, logon scripts, etc. So this way, the logon simulation can alert you to slowness that may arise during the logon process and give you a clue as to where what you need to do to resolve logon slowness. One big plus with the logon simulator is that it checks the entire service delivery chain. So if there is an issue anywhere in the service delivery chain, 
that is affecting logons, you would see it manifest in the logon simulator results. Logon simulation is very useful when you're using certain cloud. As you may not have access to part, there may be parts of uh, the infrastructure that you can't control. And you need to know if the problem is in your infrastructure or in Citrix Cloud. This is also a useful tool if you're looking to migrate from one version of uh, Zenap or Zen Desktop to another version. Or you can even check it out if you're exploring new technologies like WEM and app layering. Benchmark performance before you deploy these technologies. Look at your logon times after you deploy these technologies. The results of logon simulation are stored in a historical database, so you can go back in time and look at trends of logon. You can get different types of reports to document the performance of your infrastructure. You can use the reports to analyze logon failure trends. You can look at uh, which step of logon is taking more time, and you can also get an idea on where you need to focus your attention to improve logon times. Now, logon simulation simulates three main steps. Once you launch your application or desktop, the logon simulation ends. Now, what if you want to go beyond application or desktop launch? For instance, you may want to simulate, uh, after a user logs into their desktop, you may want to simulate a user who's launching a browser, connecting to a web portal, logging into the portal, performing some tasks, and then logging out of the portal, and finally logging out from the desktop. The logon simulator will not handle this for you. This is where you need what we call as full session simulation. With the full session simulator, you, not, you get a recording engine that you can use to teach the tool how many steps you need to simulate, what each step does, and how to determine what is success and what is not at each step. The recorded script is then saved and then played back from one or multiple locations. Like the logon simulator, the full session simulator also takes a user perspective of the service. So it does not require any agents on your servers or desktops. The comparison on the top right-hand side shows the essential differences between full session and logon simulation. Logon simulation is simple to set up. It's pre-programmed to execute just the logon process. There is no recording step. The full session simulation is a bit more involved to set up. You have to teach the engine what it needs to simulate. At the same time, this capability is more powerful. You can use it to simulate any application that is published through Citrix. In fact, this tool can even be used to simulate any other type of application as well, web applications, client-server applications, etc. I'll show you a quick video of the recording and play, how the playback of the tool works. What you're seeing here is a, um, the simulation connecting to your Citrix storefront. Once it collects to a storefront, it's clicking on a Zenap, one of your desktops connecting to a Zenap server. Once the session is established, the simulation is opening a browser and is logged into a portal, help desk portal. A search is performed to look for a specific ticket ID in the portal. And if all of these steps succeed, then the session logs out. Now, this is the result of the simulation in the monitoring tool. On the left-hand side, you can see the total time taken for the simulation and the success and failure of the entire simulation. The transaction chain shows the different steps performed in sequence, and the success and failure of each step is noted here, as well as the time taken for each step. The information shown here can then be used to generate service level reports. If you had a failure, you'll see an alert that clearly tells you which step of the simulation has failed. The remaining steps will not proceed because of the failure. And when there is a failure, a screenshot is captured automatically by the tool. The camera icon next to the failed um, uh, status helps you look at the screenshot of the failure. So this way you can easily determine what caused the failure and resolve it. Screenshots are captured automatically and stored for later analysis. So even if you had a logon failure for an hour at 2 a.m., 
you can analyze the reason for the failure when you get back into work later in the day. Broadly, there are two categories of problems that you'll face in a Citrix environment. One that affects just specific users and another that affects a majority of users. Synthetic monitoring is intended to alert you to problems that affect a majority of users. You may want to deploy monitoring from multiple locations so that you can detect and resolve issues that are specific to a location. A key advantage of synthetic monitoring is its ability to detect issues even when no users are actively logged in to your servers. This way you can detect scenarios where one or more of your servers has hung or you have something like a black hole effect where new logons are being directed to servers that are not operating well. Synthetic monitoring is also ideal for demonstrating compliance to SLAs. You can also use this to benchmark performance before and after any migration. At the same time, synthetic monitoring does not replace the need to monitor real users, their experience and their activities. In an ideal world, you will deploy both synthetic and real user monitoring for your Citrix environment. Um, in summary, here are four reasons I want you to take away that highlight why synthetic monitoring is a must have. Firstly, it doesn't need any agents on your servers or desktops, so it's pretty simple to implement. Can be deployed across locations, so it gives you a view of performance from your key locations. At the same time, you can deploy synthetic monitoring alone and in as small a scale as you want. Start with your data center first, then expand out to your key locations one by one. And since it runs 24 by 7, it can give you a heads up so that you can detect and resolve problems before users complain. Before I end, I want to just highlight that we at EG Innovations have made the logon simulator available to the community as a free SaaS service. You can download and install the simulator and be up and running in just a couple of minutes. And you can use this to simulate logons to both Citrix and VMware Horizon. To get started, just go to our website, www.eginnovations.com slash express. And if you are interested in more details on EG Innovations, please visit our website, www.eginnovations.com.